Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I am going to make a galaxy card featuring the twinkle lights which I love because they are so fun and really perfect for a starlit uh, galaxy. To create my galaxy I will be playing with some Lindy's gang magicals and I have I have quite a variety here and it's a mix of both the magicals that are have a little bit of a shimmer to them as well as some that are flat because I figure I'm going to be doing so much layering that there's going to be um even though I'm using some that are flat and have no shimmer and no mica in them, it'll be fine. There'll be plenty of shimmer in some of the other powders that I um, will be using. And I had so much fun creating this first panel that um, after I turned off the camera, I made a couple more. <laughs> and I, I actually ended up using one of the ones that I, I didn't film, but I do want to leave this in just so that you can kind of see my process. So. I'm starting off with blue as my base and so there's a combination of different techniques that I'm using as I'm applying the shimmer powders. The um, blue I just sort of sprinkled on and then spritzed it. So sometimes I'm spritzing a dry powder onto a dry uh, cardstock and then spritzing with water. That gives it a really nice burst, a really nice sort of organic um, spread. Then I'm also using a brush with some water, so a watercolor brush, and very deliberately putting um, some inks in various places. Primarily I'm using this to kind of selectively make some areas darker. So the key I've found to most galaxy backgrounds that I've um, tried to make is just layering and trying to keep some areas very light and um, bright and to not be afraid of a lot of darkness surrounding that because it is it is the galaxy after all. And so in between layers, what I am doing just to kind of speed up the process a little bit is taking a heat gun to it. This panel, I won't lie, it took a really long time um, to create because of all of the layers, all of the um, drying time, and it's not going to look great every second as it's being developed. <laughs> but you have to kind of just keep working with it, keep pushing through. Anywhere that you want maybe a little bit of a softer edge, um, because sometimes when you take a heat gun to, to speed up the drying, it can create some uh, watermarks and sometimes that's good. The effect of it's nice. And sometimes um, like right around that bright pink area, see how stark that is in terms of it's pink and then there's some very, very well-defined lines. Well, a quick spurt, um, spritz of water over some more powder will help to soften that. So you can see it reactivated some of the powders that were already there and then kind of spread it out, made it look a little bit more cloudy. I also like to spritz directionally to kind of move the color in the direction that I want. And when it's looking about right, I just let it dry. And you wanna make sure it dries completely before you move on to the next step, which is to add all of the stars in the night sky. So I've got some titanium white gouache, but you can use um, like an acrylic paint. You can use, Spellbinders has a new splatter white, which I hear is really fabulous. I haven't yet tried that myself. And all I've done is just watered this down a little. It's tough to know how much to water something down because if you water it down too much, then it's going to lose its opaqueness. And when it dries, it won't be as bright white as um, when you splattered it originally. So, um, but then if you don't have enough water, then it won't splatter. It'll just kind of drop in, in globs. 
So it's something that you kind of have to play with, maybe test on another sheet before you splatter onto your galaxy. <laughs> so I've got my panel. This is actually, uh, as I mentioned, one of the panels that I made after I finished filming that first one. And I'm just going to cut this down to USA 2 in size. I knew my panel was going to be a little bit larger than what I needed. And, um, and so I've cut that and it's going to fill my entire card front. I'm not going to have any of the card base showing. And, uh, you can see this is very similar to that first panel. It's, um, but it's a little bit more, I think, dramatic. <laughs> so that's why I, uh, chose this one, but you can see all of the very, very similar colors that I used. It's all the same colors, just blues, some purples, but the purples, because of the nature of the magicals, some of them have different colors mixed in with them. So when you give it that spritz of water to activate it, sometimes you see some very different, unique colors coming through. And that's what I really love about um, using the magicals for this, because it's kind of like comets, you know, it's, it's got very different, um, little surprises of uh, those nebulas and all of those different things that are um, part of the galaxy. So really, really fun. Now I've got this, it's an older stamp set uh, from Reverse Confetti, which I believe is no longer in business, but I still really love this stamp set. It's called Moon Men. And it um, has this cute little astronaut boy, um, I guess it could be a girl too, you don't know, you never know. Um, I've also stamped and colored up the rocket ship, and there's also a shooting star. My original plan is that the twinkle lights, actually, there are three lights connected by one battery. And when you push the battery to turn on the lights, they um, they twinkle, as you see. They don't all come on and off at the exact same time like the easy lights do, which makes it really, really fabulous for things like stars in the night sky. My original plan, though, was to actually not use them as stars in the galaxy, since I did splatter plenty of stars in there already. <laughs> but I thought that I would stamp and color up these three images, and I thought that maybe I would light up these three elements that are going to be uh, part of my scene here. And so I thought maybe I would light up the inside of the rocket ship, and you can see it kind of started in that direction. I'm, I'm sort of placing, um, doing a little bit of an audition, a little bit of a dry fit to see where I want all of my different elements. And then I'm going to poke a hole through my galaxy panel so that the light can be attached behind the panel and still shine through that hole. And so that's generally how you would um, attach your your lights uh, wherever you'd like them to be. Um, just poke a hole through the panel and that way you have uh, some um, a gap or a uh, opening where that light can shine through. And especially since I did use watercolor paper, this, this paper is pretty thick. And so you definitely want to um, make sure that you you give enough um, of an opening for that light to really shine. The other thing that I wanted to do was light up on the little astronaut. There's kind of like a little button indicator light on his, um, on his space suit. So I thought it would be fun if I lit that up. And then there's the shooting star, which I thought I would light up as well. So it seemed like there were three logical places of uh, for all of these elements to to light them up but in the end I um, I only actually stuck to the original plan of lighting up the the spacesuit um, indicator light on my little astronaut boy here and I did double up on um, these die cuts so I stamped and die cut and then I die cut an extra um, an extra copy of uh, each of the elements just so that they're sturdy, especially since I'm going to turn the astronaut boy into a wobbler as well. So he's going to um, not only light up, but he's also going to wobble. And the cool thing is, is that um, because with the twinkle lights and with the easy lights, there's quite a long... Um, 
like electrical line, like the the wire, is quite long, and so you can actually um, feed the light through the Galaxy panel, and then I tape the light to the uh, back of the astronaut so that it's the light is right up against the opening where that little indicator light is on his suit. That way it's more concentrated there and it's um, going to be more visible as opposed to just like a flood of light behind him. So it really looks like it's that button that's lit up. And that's possible because you can you can pull the, the line out as far as you need. And so with the other two lights, um, I did actually end up using them as sort of twinkle lights in the in the galaxy. With the other two lights, I'm I'm taping the LED close to um, that light and right behind, right onto the back of my galaxy panel. And again, that that way it's nice and bright. It shines through the panel really um, nicely, and um, and that's as easy as it is to position and place your lights. But now we need to actually stamp out the word push so that the person who gets this card knows that there's something that they can do, that they can turn this card on and, um, and watch it light up. So I am going to just again um, reconfigure everything because you can see now I'm, I'm, uh, I've moved things around quite a lot from my original plan. I'm going to put my rocket ship down here by the sentiment. And I want to make sure that I, I know where everything is going to go so that I can stamp the word push where it won't get covered up by anything else. And this is kind of tough because I have a little bit of dry magical powder that didn't completely dissolve as I was, as I created this particular background. And so I did have to stamp this out multiple times with my stays on opaque white. You could also stamp and then um, heat emboss, but what I was concerned about was some of the magical powders actually coming through the embossing powder. <laughs> and um, and so I didn't want that to be uh, the heat and the embossing powder to activate the magical powders. So I just stuck to stamping in white and it, it worked just fine. It's very, it's um, legible and it works perfectly, especially since that background is so, so dark. Now that I've got that placed, I just wanna double, triple check that I line up my battery exactly where that push button is. And it's as easy as just gluing it down to your card base. And all of the wiring is connected. You don't have to create any circuits. And all you need to do now is attach the panel to your card base. And I'm going to use the world's best foam tape, which is also by Pear Blossom Press. And I am going to, um, I'm just gonna cut down one of these strips in, in half because it's a little bit wider than what I've left uh, myself space for along the bottom and the right side. And so I've just trimmed that down. Really easy to cut through this foam. It's, um, it's really, an interesting formulation. There's some very magical properties about it because the liner is really easy to peel off. The tape itself is um, very um, easy to lift. As you saw, I had it down and I was able to peel it off without it tearing any cardstock. So the foam adhesive is repositionable for up to 30 minutes or thereabouts. But um, surprisingly enough, that would make you think that this wasn't a very strong adhesive, but quite the contrary, it's very strong. After 24 hours, when the adhesive has had a chance to completely cure, it is really strong, super sticky, and it's going to hold everything in place. So it's really great that it has some properties that make it really easy and friendly to work with, especially if you need that little extra bit of time to move things around a little. I find 30 minutes is a very 
nice, generous、um, window of time because I leave this part to last essentially, and that way, if I need that extra time, it it has never taken me longer than thirty minutes to、um, to get everything kind of attached in、um, in the right place. Because a lot of that I've already decided on, and really at this point it's just gluing the panel on, and then putting the final decorations. So a good strong burnish is always recommended. So I、um, burnished everything really well, and even after burnishing, though, if you still needed, you still could lift that up and not have、um, much tearing, if any at all. So now that I've got my panel down. My、um, I pulled the wire out just enough so that my astronaut who、um, is attached with a wobbler has the light directly attached to him. So if you really if you peeked behind there, if somebody was really curious, they would be able to see that little light. But it's really adorable that、um, that he wobbles and he can、um, be lit up. So really, really fun, and my last and final element will be this shooting star. I'm using a little bit of 3D glue gel to attach、um, the star, and I put a little bit of low-profile foam behind my rocket ship. I don't want too much、um, dimension here because the 3D、um, the foam adhesive is it's perfect. Um, thick enough for the battery, which is already makes this a rather thick card.、Uh, so I don't want to have the additional elements be even even more dimension on top of it. But it helps to make things pop off of that background a little bit more. So here's a close up of my galaxy, which I love how it turned out, and I think it's really fun. It's going to make for a very special birthday card. Here is、um, the card lit up, and it's fun to see it kind of twinkle. And I just love I love it everything about this, and especially when you turn the lights off and you turn it on, that galaxy sky really lights up when、um, when you've got those lights on. Thanks for joining me for this video today. I hope you like my card, and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks again, and until next time, happy crafting, and have a fabulous day. Bye.